Hello everyone and welcome back to my power ranking series from my number six team. We're going to be looking at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right. There's some really interesting moves here that the uh, that the Bucks did this offseason. I mean, so you got Smith at left tackle. He's been always pretty serviceable, especially in the pass protection game. Uh, they did an extension for him a little while ago. Definitely worth it. Uh, the biggest weakness you're looking at is Aaron Stinney. They did lose some talent on the inside in uh, Kappa, who went to the Bengals, and, of course, the retirement of Ali Marpet. So there is some issues there. They did draft Luke Goddick, though, who, again, I've talked about uh, when talking about my draft pre-assessments. I think Goddick is a very underrated player. I originally had him as a tackle. I'd rather try him at tackle, but with the tackles they have here, they really don't need to, so they're really just going to kick him to guard immediately. So don't be surprised if Goddick uh, actually beats out Stinney for that position sooner rather than later. I, I really do like Luke Goddick uh, and the way he plays the game. Very, very low center of gravity. Uh, very tough base to move off of. And I think uh, with what they like to do here with all the draw plays with Tom Brady, a lot of the play action shots, uh, there'll be a lot of a lot of opportunities for Luke Goddard to really thrive in this system. Uh, they did trade for Shaq Mason, though. Uh, what a freaking fantastic trade. I mean, for the for the Bucks, they they just straight up win this. This is, this is a player who's super familiar with Brady. He's familiar with this style of offense they want to run. He's still one of the better guards in the league as well, especially run blocking wise. Uh, gets to help train Luke Goddick, who again I think can help fill in that position at left guard pretty well. Uh, this is just a slam dunk move. I, I have literally zero issues with get trading for Zach Mace, uh, Shaq Mason, and what they traded for him. It's it's just a win for the Bucks. Uh, Ryan Jensen's still here at center. I think he's deserved a star now. He's shown some really good quality play. Uh, over the last couple seasons, and I think it's super exciting to see that he's still here and still running with Tom Brady. Uh, I talked about Tristan Wirfs a couple times the last couple videos. Uh, he was like an all-pro tackle, just straight out the gate, no issues. Uh, and he has continued that level of play. He is super reliable at right tackle and was, I think, a very underrated reason as to why that Bucks team in their Super Bowl run uh, was able to compete very highly very early on him and Antoine Winfield. I don't think people gave him even enough credit uh, for what they were able to do for that team. So full credit for that offensive line. It's still very good. I mean, uh, Stinney's really the only weakness, and uh, I'd, I'd still be fine with, you know, Luke Goddick getting in there and starting over him. And I think this line's not going to really let Brady down. Uh, Brady coming back for probably one more season. Uh, he just signed a, you know, big mega extension with, uh, a sports newscasting position, and I think it's very likely that he's going to probably take the last shot at this. Uh, you know, we I think people have been saying that for for a few years now, but uh, after signing that mega deal, I I assume that this is going to be his last go. Uh, he was a really high volume passer last year. Uh, they had him passing an insane amount in these games, uh, but he doesn't really seem like it's the that the arm talent has fallen off at all. Like Brady's done an exceptional job of of keeping himself healthy and ready to play and uh since coming to tampa he's he's been quite personable and quite quite open with his teammates they all really just love and enjoy that he's here so uh I, i'm super excited to see what uh now take you know new head coach todd bowles does uh running with tom brady for one more year making a good push and i think again trading for jack mason that brady's super familiar with as well uh, not a bad idea to help, you know, get this line going yet again. Uh, and I expect this crew is not going to be causing any issues for this team. Backfield receivers, it is pretty loaded. Uh, many, losing Gronk hurts. You know, Gronk and Brady's chemistry is really was kind of upholding upholding Gronk. Um, a lot of Gronk's athletic ability was has been known that it was tapered off. Uh, doesn't mean he was still wasn't a good blocker though. And I said that chemistry that he had with Brady made that him still a very reliable target for them. So switching to Cameron Bright as your starting tight end is is not the the greatest option in the world. Although Bright has shown that he can be a tight end too pretty reliably. Uh, Kate Otten is coming here. I'm not big on Kate Otten's hands. That's one of my major knocks on him, and I think it's it's one of my probably more unpopular opinions. I think people are actually pretty high on his hands. I, I, I'm i not. I'm not. So uh, what I do like, though, is Auden is actually a very exceptional blocker. I did have that note on him. 
uh, coming from Washington. I think he'll be a very good blocker very early on. Uh, another rookie they have in White, I wasn't super high on. I think there was better running backs on the board when they took White. But they've had some success with some kind of out-of-the-box running backs before. So I'll withhold my massive amount of judgment on that selection until I at least see him take the field. Although him not taking the field would be pretty telling early on. Uh, Leonard Fournette, he got a pretty nice extension to stay here. He's been very reliable for this team. Uh, you know, playoff Lenny is one of the better memes coming from this team. I think he, well, he doesn't do the pass catching role that this offense really likes to do very well. Uh, he runs super hard for this team. And there's absolutely good value in that. Like he does have the nice, you know, running back talent that you see the as, as a runner. But the, what he gives this team in effort is, it, it is something that should be valued and. I don't think we talk about it enough when talking about team building. You need guys like this to, to really make a team gel. Uh, depth receivers, Scotty Miller, Jalen Darden are the big ones. Uh, really, they're just more kind of speed threats, the guys you can either use to stretch the field or get on these like little screen pass plays that they really like to do and just let them just burn people. So there, there's some good stuff there. Uh, you can also slide them into the slot uh, for Russell Gage if you need a little bit of a break uh, or you want to change up some stuff schematically. Uh, them affording Russell Gage is pretty huge here. I was definitely not expecting it. Uh, and I think it's definitely helped. I mean, this is, again, this receiver crew is getting right back to that idea of we have three receivers that can beat a lot of defensive back looks. Uh, and they all offer something slightly different, right? Russell Gage is more, he, he has played on the outside, but he's done most of his best work coming out of the slot. And with Godwin and, Evans taking the outside again. I think he's going to get right back to some of his best work. So you've got Gage, who will probably beat a vast majority of slot corners. You've got Goodwin, uh, or Godwin, pardon me, who is an exceptional player to stretch field. He can get deep, like one of the best in the league. Uh, and, you know, he, he's already ahead of injury status as well, uh, healing-wise. That was a recent report that came out a couple days ago. He's... I mean, this team sorely missed him when they didn't have him, and getting him back sooner rather than later at full health is definitely going to help this team's ability to compete. And then Mike Evans, you know, Mr. Consistent. He's been super consistent as a uh, receiver. He is an excellent run blocker. Again, there's, you know, I, I definitely value that out of my receivers probably a little bit more than some other, uh, some other people who are doing some analytics on this team, but... I, I think it absolutely matters, especially with how often this team wants to get the screen game going or how often this team really likes to do these little dump-off passes to their running back crew. Uh, I think Evans' ability to block is definitely underrated. Uh, and having, of course, a guy with Mike Evans' size, you know, matching up in one-on-one -on -one with a smaller DB, uh, more often than not, Evans should be able to out-bully him besides maybe a couple guys, right? Maybe a guy like a Jair Alexander. Uh, has been able to hold him in check before, but there's there's not too many. You know, Trey White probably can do it as well. But again, to summarize this crew as all, it's really just there's some lacking talent at tight end, and I think some of the choices at running back uh, past Fournette were a little iffy, but the receiving crew for Brady here is still very strong. All right, defensive front seven. Uh, first, I want to get off to Levante David and, and Devin White. Lawrence David probably is a star linebacker by himself, although he is starting to slow down. He still has some of the really elite coverage instincts, uh, and he does you know, put some decent effort in the run as well. Uh, but I think him combined with Devin White is very exceptional. Devin White's that just extreme athlete that you know he kind of bullies his way into everything, whether that be you know, coverage or, or run defense. And I think having a very stable player in Levante beside him uh, really makes that, I mean, really a threat because you know David's going to be doing exactly what you need him to, where he's going to, you know, he's going to meet the exact blocker he should and the exact gap he should, which should allow Devin White to just scream like all hell, coming through an open gap, going to go get that running back or or come down really hard on that, you know, drag route they have as the dump off or whatever it is. So I think combined they are absolutely a star level you know, uh, talent, at least on my board. 
Uh, there's Shaq Barrett as well. He's really coming to his own, uh, leaving the Bron- Denver Broncos and coming to uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Pretty crafty. I think he doesn't get nearly as much praise for his craftiness as a pass rusher. He does well to set up things. Uh, like He'll be giving certain looks early on and then goad these tackles into uh, you know, trying to make a jab early or kick sliding too wide to account for something, and then he'll hit them with something else. So he does a very good job of making his initial move kind of vague uh, and then basically hitting the tackles where they're weak. So I'll give uh, Shaq Bear full credit there, and that was a pretty good extension for them, especially, again, with what we've seen uh, edge players start to go for. I think that was a very good signing by the by the Buccaneers. Uh, George Tryon Sharenka uh, wasn't a huge love of mine. I had him kind of in the second round. However, I think with when they were kind of looking at drafting him, when uh, I very was very comfortable with them taking him in the essence of they they saw someone who had high athletics that they wanted to really work on that could sit behind JPP that also has the mold of what JPP does well and will allow him to really just develop an attack in that same scheme when you know Pierre Paul eventually leaves. And I think we saw that immediately. Uh, Toronto Sharenka, when he was doing exactly what you know Pierre Paul does, is when he really thrived the most. Uh, and I think that development track will really continue now that he's going to start taking over that role. Uh, you know, a lot of it comes down to really hard nose uh, run defense, where often a lot of these guys run to his side. Uh, and when it comes to pass pass attempts, a lot of it is a lot of these. Uh, stunts that lead to a lot in the lot of power looks where he can either get, you know, shattering over the guard or he is freeing up the guy behind him. And he's crashing into the tackles uh, inside shoulder. So there's a lot of fun stuff they can do with uh, Joe Tryon Trianka. And I think I think this year you'll you'll start to see a little bit more of, of what he can do. On the interior, they did draft kind of what we call as a tweener in Logan Hall, you know, he he's big, but he's a little too big for the edge. But he's not really too big enough to play on the interior. Uh, he I think is a perfect player to pair with William Golston, who they still have here, who was kind of that player early on uh, as a tweener. And I think he can learn a hell of a lot here. They did really well in developing some of these interior pieces uh, in the past, and I think getting a guy who fits that very similar mold that Golston had. Uh, in Logan Hall, I think you could see a, a very good player. I don't know how high his ceiling will truly be, uh, but I think he can be a pretty good player early on uh, if he does pick up a lot of stuff from Golston early. Now, to play over him, they went and grabbed Akeem Hicks because why not? Akeem Hicks still has it, uh, and no one was really you know gunning to sign a 34, 35-year-old D-tackle. Uh, And Hicks is phenomenal. He can line up at nose tackle if you lose Vita for any period of time. You can line him up at like the two or three if you really need to and just let him crash and and rush. He still has real good rush ability uh, pass rush wise to get home from the interior. It's I think was a very good move for both sides. Uh, Akeem Hicks gets to keep playing and he keeps to, you know, gets a legitimate chance to make a Super Bowl push while also being in a scheme that pertains to him quite well played something pretty similar with the Chicago Bears and their you know in their heyday as a aggressive defense uh, when Fangio was still there and the Bucks get an extremely good player that people were passing on because they're getting there so a lot of these teams are trying to get younger uh, and they're like perfect we get, we get to make a rush and run for it right now and if he goes next season right he retires or he decides to go to a different team oh well you've already pre-planned for it it was a good move for both sides. Uh, Vita Vea, definitely star nose tackle. He is incredible in the run. I mean, incredible in the sense that he not only just takes up space and doesn't move back an inch. Like, I've seen the poor centers and guards when he's lined up at zero uh, or, like, one eye or something like that that have to try to move him off space. They just struggle. And I, I fully expect Vita will be completely fine going into this season. I think he's going to bully a lot more defense or uh, offensive linemen yet again, uh, especially with the reload of talent here coming to this front seven. Uh, Vita also offers some pretty good uh, pass rush coming from the interior as well. 
uh, Vita is super big on these really just kind of, I don't really want to call them a, it's not even really a bull rush, but Vita basically gets his one hand underneath the, uh, not really even shoulder pads, more or less under the armpit of players, and he has just so much force in that push with his hand that he can just unsettle some of these lighter centers and get them stumbling backwards, in which then he just kind of long arm pushes through them uh, and leaves so much space uh, for either him to you know smoke the quarterback or for the rest of the guys around him to clean up. So he's a special player, and that was an easy extension for the Bucks to do, and he'll just wreck havoc going into this year. Defensive backs, tons of talent here. You got Sean Murphy bunting, uh, Carlton Davis, and Jamel Dean. And they also drafted a very high-end, you know, lengthy uh, athletic corner in Zion McCollum. He's very interest, uh, intriguing as a developmental prospect. Uh, but this crew is, I mean, extremely good. They're extremely aggressive uh, as well, which is to their benefit and to their, to, you know, that does hurt them as well. But uh, Dean's the one I, I'm the most interested in. I think he is the the better of the four, uh, four corners here, uh, or at least the three main ones we're talking, right? We don't really know what Zion McCollum can become yet. Uh, but of the three, I think he is definitely the best. He shows the most instincts in zone uh, and the best ability to break down on routes and know when to be aggr- uh, aggressive and when to sit back. Uh, but Carl, that's not saying Carlton Davis and Tom Murphy butting are bad at all. No, they're they're excellent in their own ways. Uh, I, I think it was Brett Coleman who, who said Murphy Bunting looks like a gazelle when he runs out of the slot, because he's he's much larger than most slots are, and I I completely agree. He has this real long stride to keep up with these shorter guys that are supposed to burn him, and they just can't, because he just he is right on top of them. Uh, these guys just they fit Todd Bowles' defense so well that I think uh, I think you'll you'll be seeing a lot more aggressive and fun play from this from this trio yet again. Uh, and I, I fully expect that Zion will probably adjust the Todd Bowles system pretty quickly uh, since it'll, it's going to really allow him to break down pretty, very easily. Safeties, they did two really good things in getting uh, Logan Ryan and then they're also going to grab Keanu Neal. Uh, Keanu Neal coding back from linebacker to safety is not a bad idea at all. I think that's completely fine, especially since when they're going to want to use him, they're going to be bringing him down to the box where he thrived anyways. That's when Keanu Neal was really doing his best work on the Falcons, where he could really kind of come down on some routes uh, and lay some big hits or or play run defense coming down into the box. So I think that was a really good nothing, you know, nothing signing by the Buccaneers. They're not losing anything doing it. And Logan Ryan is super used to playing either strong or free here. He's used to this type of defense coming from uh, Tennessee, the Patriots, and the Giants. He's played this hybrid role a bunch. He can play nickel if you need to. So uh, that was, again, a very easy sign for the Bucks. It's like this guy can be an answer to a lot of different things depending on what we need. Uh, he's also a very good leader of the backfield, a good veteran. So no issues at all. Uh, currently, they're giving Mike Edwards the start at strong safety. I'm not entirely sure if that's what's going to be the actual starting safety going into the year. I wouldn't be surprised if Logan Ryan eventually gets that spot, but so far, Todd Bowles seems to like having Edwards there and feels comfortable starting him. So again, Todd's with especially with defense, he is more than earned uh, benefit of the doubt, and I'll be excited to see what he does uh, now that Mike Edwards is getting the start and uh, Jordan Whitehead's gone in the Jets. Uh, of course, I mentioned him earlier, but Antoine Winfield Jr. Uh, was one of my favorite safeties in that draft. I think he was super underrated, probably because of his size. Again, he's a little shorter, but uh, the zone instincts, especially in single high, are just there. He is super good at reading not only the defense uh, in front of him, or not defense, uh, the offense in front of him, but he has very good feel for what is going to be coming open to the side or behind him. He, he's he got this almost, it's almost like a third eye in the back of his head uh, when these guys are trying to get a post route behind him. And that's when he really gets them, because that's when he just flip hit, uh, flips hips and turns up field. And these guys really struggle to, to beat Winfield like over in that way. And he's also another guy who can drop down into into these nickel looks or come down in, in man. He's a super versatile safety that way. So that that was, again, a very excellent selection by the Buccaneers. He'll be their safety probably for years to come and uh, a very exceptional player. I would not be surprised if, again, he, he's close to his way to earning a star. I assume it's going to be happening sooner rather than later. 
Special teams and coaching. Uh, Todd Bowles is taking over. I've, I've talked about him a lot. You know, Bruce Arians is gone now. I, I don't think it's going to hurt overly much. I think this will be just fine. Bowles' defense, I think, is excellent. I love his mind as a defensive coordinator. Uh, and I think he's going to be spending a lot of his time doing exactly that here as well. Uh, a lot of the players love him as a coordinator and as a person. Uh, that was the same way with him on the Jets. Uh, a lot of players... I know did talk highly of him as a person. I think he's a really good leader as a head coach. So I have no issue with that move at all. I actually think that's a totally fine move, especially since you still get to keep Arians as a uh, kind of part-time front office guy to kind of help the, the team keep going, at least for a little while. So I think Arians shows a very good successor for this team. Uh, Coordinator-wise, Armstrong and Leftwich obviously still very strong in what they do. Uh, left, which I think is very likely to, you know, get a head coaching job going the next year. He denied Jacksonville because they weren't willing to move off Balky for whatever reason. Uh, so having two very strong coordinators there is is excellent going into this year. Uh, and of course, you got some new guys at defensive coordinator with Todd Bowles taking over the head coach role. You got a joint effort in Rogers and Foot. Uh, the joint stuff typically doesn't work overly well, but. I'm willing to give this a shot here again. They defensively, this this team has earned some benefit of the doubt. So I'll, I'll see what Todd Bowles does, especially since it's going to be more or less him, you know, organizing everything. And it's going to be his defensive scheming. So I'm willing to let that kind of be a benefit of the doubt. Uh, for special teamers, Ryan Suckup, he's been a fine, fine kicker. Uh, punter wise, Camarda, he's a rookie. Uh, again, his numbers were pretty good in college. We'll see how he adjusts. A lot of these guys do do struggle uh, in transition. Not all of them are going to work. So we'll see if Camaro is one of the ones that does or doesn't. Uh, poor Buccaneers haven't had the the best past of these guys working out for them. So I'm I'm hoping this one does, uh, but I won't hold it against them uh, until I see him play. So for the number sixteen bucks, for basically all in this year, tons of money has been handed out, and basically more money on top of that. Uh, they pushed all their chips in on this season with just a few to the future in the last couple draft selections they did. Uh, they're really going to need these players to do their part like a well-oiled machine just to basically get to that Super Bowl and be in a position to win it, uh, which is basically what happened when they won that Super Bowl uh, a little while ago. They they need basically Brady to be you know making those good reads, players to be in the exact spot that we, we need them to, and when those D-backs do take a gamble and try to undercut the route, uh, they guess correctly. So, not impossible at all. I think they can make another very strong push, especially in the weak NFC now. I think it's very likely they, they make a very good contention to make Super Bowl this year. And I think uh, I think Brady knows it. That's why he's like, I'm completely content with coming back for one last push. And with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you next time. Later.